Well, hello, everybody. You know, and it is such a great day here in Colorado. But uh, according to the picture there with Pat, that's where I really want to be. I want to be on the beach. But thank you so much. This is another Facebook give back series. And like I say every time, this series was born out of the need that adversity has given all of us worldwide right now. But I'm going to be continuing the series after this. But there is no selling. This is not a bait and switch. This is not stay tuned. There is more afterwards. And there's, but there is going to be a free gift because I ask all of my guests to be able to give something back to the audience that comes on and stays with us. And we're going to be together for about 20, 25, maybe at the most 30 minutes. So without further ado, I just want, I am so happy. I mean, maybe it's my inner uh, financial planner kid that I was for so many years. But Pat Wally, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Gary. So yeah, we're, we're hanging out at the beach and Gary said, hey, you want to come on Facebook Live? So yes, so here I am. Thank you, sir. Yeah, there we go. Now the real Pat Wally. The real, well, both were real, Pat Wally. <laughs> so, you know, when we start looking at credit, I, number one, over the years that as a financial planner, I found that so many people did not really understand what it was, how to use it, and what the rules are to play the game, which is really important. And that's why over the, the last couple of years, as we have become friends, you have become a true resource for my clients because, in fact, I just referred one of my clients to you yesterday. And yes, um, so real basic, let, let's start out, you know, what is credit? You know, what, what is it? How should we use it? Let's do a general overview and then let's get into some specifics of what you're seeing people, maybe the mistakes they're making and then what we can do about it. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Gary. Um, so from a high level, 30,000 foot view, credit is that thing that lenders use to gauge their risk. So if you go to borrow money for a car or a house, the credit is what lenders use to determine, are you a good lending risk? Um, there's a number of different systems that give us points and uh, give that information back to the lenders. The most familiar one that we most people know is FICO score. Uh, that's just one model. And basically it's something that every American, if you're doing any, any kind of credit card transaction, you have some kind of credit that you use to get lifestyle. So what are the, the things that, and like we were talking right before we went live, is that credit really is a tool. Um, I had a friend in that I met in college and afterwards I asked him, it was about going out to dinner or whatever. And he goes, hey, Gary, I have money I haven't even spent yet. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, I got a credit card. And I'm oh, going, man. dude, it's not your money. It's a tool. <laughs> you know, it was like. That's right. And, then, and later on, he married a CPA. So hopefully she took <laughs> control. But, you know, when we look at credit, what is it that, particularly right now, are there things that we can do to enhance our credit? What are the things that, maybe we're doing that is, uh, you know, giving us not the benefit or actually giving us a deterrent to our credit rating. And that is a good, but very big question. Um, I will tell you right now, it's okay. I, I work with a lot of businesses uh, through different contracts that I have and they're applying for these PPP and EIDL loans, which has been all over the news. And that's actually a check on your credit. And I'm hearing now back from businesses that are being turned down because their credit score was not good enough oh. or their credit was not good enough. So how does that affect? It affects everything you do when you're looking for loans or, or some sort of a lending. Um, the number one thing that takes a hit is late payments. If you're late on a payment and it gets reported, that stays with you for seven years. If you are using, the number two thing is max, maxing out your credit card. So what's happening now, people are living on their credit cards because maybe they're unemployed or they've had a reduction in income and they're using their credit cards to get by. Those credit balances are going up, which drives the score down. Um, that's the two things that I'm seeing the most of. And then if you apply for a lot of credit, your score will go down as well. And you know, there's a saying that the score doesn't get you the loan, but the score will get you in the door. 
you know, so, go ahead. No, so that, the biggest thing I, I tell my clients right now is, is protect your score, preserve what you have, and then recover. So I've also heard that, let's say you pay off a credit card and mm -hmm. you cancel it right away, that could hurt your credit score. Is that still the case? Yeah, there's, there's actually six different items that basically affect your credit score. One of them is how long you've had credit. So closing old accounts in good standing does drop your score. Okay. Give you an example. I had child support payments and I paid on time and all that. But when I finally closed the account, my score dropped by like 15 points. Like what happened? Well, you had this long running account in good standing that you closed. Well, I had that a kick in the head. I closed a good account and I got dinged for it. So it's a screwy game. They're, they're for profit companies. So the rules are going to be in their favor. They're not the enemy. It's just that's their rules, their game. If you learn to play it, and that's what we do is help you to play the game with better understanding of the rules. So if, you know, we have people, like I'm a, a subchapter S, an S Corp, uh, a lot of people are LLCs or sole proprietors. Uh, what are the rules, what are the things that, are they different for the different entities, how we do business and are there things, you know, that you think we could do that would enhance us? I mean, I always say it's the order in which we do it that makes the difference, not what we do necessarily. So what are some of the key things right now in a tight economy that we could do to, to, to help ourselves and help the credit? Because a lot of times I think people think about credit for themselves and not their business. And That's a, yeah. Do you suggest opening uh, business credit card accounts and keeping it separate from your personal? I do ad advise to keep it separate from your personal. Um, that's a, you brought up a good point. There is such a thing as business credit. There's actually, I talk about three different types of credit when I'm speaking to groups. That's personal credit. That's your, I go out and I get a credit card for Pat Wally. Then there's what I call a hybrid business credit. That's where I go out as Pat Wally and I get credit for my business, but it doesn't report to my personal score. But I still have to go and put my social security number down to secure that credit. Right. So if I go to US Bank or Bank of America or something like that, and they say, yeah, 0% business credit. Well, that's true because it's for my business. So it doesn't report to my FICO score unless I default. But I do secure it and I guarantee it or guarantor, right? with my social security number. So anytime you put your social security number on a credit application, it's, it's not true business credit. Okay. Right. It's a hybrid. So, that's there is really a, good. so you can be on the hook personally for it, even though you did it as a business account. Absolutely will be on the hook for it personally. That's what you're doing is you're guaranteeing with personal assets. If you default on a loan, they can try and collect it with business, liquefy your business, liquid your business and sell your equipment. But if you're just a, a solopreneur or something like that, then they start coming after your personal bank accounts, retirement funds, uh, anything. That's the, it's, it's like the IRS, right? They can pretty much take anything. If it's a federally guaranteed loan, SBA type loan. If it's with another lending institution, they have different regulations. But then there's a third type, and this is where I really – I like to talk to the businesses is what I call pure business credit. You have your, like you are an S corp, you have an EIN. Your EIN is the entity, just like Gary Barnes is an entity with a social security number. Your business has that's EIN and it can go out and build credit as an entity that does not use social security number to guarantee it. Correct. So, so that is a lot better option. So what do you think are some of the, you know, real problems or mistakes that people are doing when we are in a tight economy? I think right now I, I, I see so many benefits from people connecting with you because, and like you said, it's, this is somewhat of a 30,000 foot view because there are so many specifics and the, the nuances of each situation that we're not going to be able to cover it all in 20, 25 minutes. Uh, <laughs> but, but what are some of the things that you're seeing that people are really making a mistake in doing? And that may sound negative, but I think sometimes if we avoid the mistake, <laughs> then we actually get a positive. 
So are there, you know, one or two things that you're seeing that people are doing now that you would really suggest that we don't? I do, actually. Uh, so I came up with a, a slogan, protect, preserve, and recover. So we're in the preservation phase. Protect, that's, you know, if you lost your job, how do you shore up your finances so you're not bleeding, right? Right. Um, now we got to preserve your, your scores, your credit, your, your uh, finances. The number one thing I see people doing right now that's damaging is maxing out their credit cards because that automatically will lower your score if you don't pay those off at the end of the month. Now, I understand there's a lot of situations where that's all you have available. I get it. But that's the number that'll that'll drop your score 60, 80 points sometimes. So it, it just delays recovery. Uh, the number two thing that I see people doing is just not making their payments um, for personal scores, for personal credit. Business credit is a whole other animal. I'm, I just don't want to really dive too deep into the nuances of that because everybody online here has some sort of a personal credit. Right. So um, personal credit, the, the best thing you can do is find a way to either call your creditor and get a loan, a deferral so you don't have to pay it this month. So that they're offering that because of COVID or just find a way to pay it, pay a little bit. Don't be, don't not make the payment. Um, Communicate is what you're saying. Exactly. Pick up the phone. I know it's busy. I, I, I get a lot of clients saying, I can't get through. I can't, you just got to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, send emails, do what you can. And if they don't give you the, the, the delay called a defer payment, then make your payment, make some sort of a payment. It's better to make a partial payment than no payment. Okay. Because at least you're not completely late. They start chalking up 30, 60, 90 day late. I see credit reports every single day and those last for seven years, Gary, seven. Wow. So the, the things you do today are gonna affect you for up to seven years. So try not to rack up your credit card bills too much, but definitely, definitely do not be late on your payments without so, communicating with the bank. So really what I'm hearing is using your credit could be simple, maybe the least amount of pain momentarily, but you could be living with that pain and really paying actually more because of the credit that it creates later on. And so absolutely, they have a balance. So, and again, every situation is different. And like you said, sometimes that's the only option. And if it is, then that's what it's there for. You know, we're, we're going to have to do what we need to do to pull the ends together. So um, the when someone defers their credit card payments, is that something that will hurt them later on on their credit report? We're going to find out because I have one credit card. <laughs> and it, I, I believe in tasting it before I give it to my friend, right? So I have a credit card, doesn't have a big balance on it, and they offered me a deferral. I'm like, let me, let me see how this works. From a personal standpoint, I want to see. And so far, my balance due is zero. It hasn't shown up on my credit report as a late payment because I made a negotiation with the bank. And, you know, I, I just want to see. Now, I'm going to start paying again this month. You know, I usually pay it down to almost no balance. But I wanted to see how that looks on my credit report. So now I've had a cycle to, to see. And we'll see. Um, I will say that um, the PPP and the business loans that people are getting, those are a pull on your credit report. I believe they're going to be dropping the points, even though they're not supposed to. So there'll be a big opportunity for you to cut for your, your following your clients to contact me if they have any question about that, because I believe we're going to be able to dispute those and get those off the record. Okay. And that's something to be proactive. It, that's really what I'm hearing you say, is don't assume there's not another way to do things. Don't necessarily just listen to the next door neighbor, but really dive in and see what the options are to yeah. not only build your credit, but keep your credit and not hurt your credit. There's really that's three right. elements there. Three elements, that's right. Protect, preserve, and recover. Oh, and there you go. I think I heard that somewhere before. Yeah. And you know, the number one thing that I also see almost every other client is talking about buying a house because the mortgage rates are so low. Well, I also work with a lot of mortgage lenders and I will tell you they've raised the minimum FICO score to get into a mortgage. It's almost, it's 
685 or higher now. Sometimes it's even higher than 685. And they check your employment 24 hours before they close the loan. To make sure you have one. And you have to show 50% in the bank. So 50% of the down has to be in the bank. I believe that's, I don't know the exact verbiage, but they, they're requiring to be able to prove you have more collateral. So it's getting harder to get those loans. The, the, the way to get that resolved is have higher credit scores. So to do whatever you can to keep it up. And so uh, is there anything that we can really do to increase our credit score? We did the negative. What is there one or maybe two things that you would suggest that would uh, give us a boost? Well, oh, let me ask you this. There's a commercial. Well, I forget what that, and we don't need to do that. Just push that. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> and, and, and automatically, your credit score goes up. You know, you're going, yeah. it, it, that's a gimmick, I'm guessing. So again, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion are the three big credit reporting agencies. And they are for-profit, multi-billion dollar companies. And they have a thing called Credit Boost. Right. And all you have to do is start letting them track certain bills, like your cell phone bill and different bills that you pay. And they will add that and increase your credit score oh, for free. Cool. For free. And your rent. And they, but you got to give them access to your bank account to be able to see transactions, first of all. <laughs> I know. And then here's the, here's the hook on this, right? So they offer it for free. I was, I'm going to put this on. This is going to be my slogan. I'm going to get a tattoo. RTFP, read the fine print. The fine print says it's free for, I believe it's 60 days. And your score will go up because they're reporting more positive things if you have more positive things. Like I always pay my cell bill on time. How come that doesn't reflect positive on my credit? Well, now they're going to add that to your reporting item. However, comma, when you stop that it becomes a paid service after that like 19.99 a month the credit boost if you stop using that they take those items off and your score immediately drops and like you say well we used to say in the financial planning world the big print giveth and the small print <laughs> taketh away <laughs> and so good so, true. so what we're going to switch gears here just a little bit i'm going to ask okay. um, to uh, share what he has. And before we do that, though, uh, if you have questions for Pat at the end, I'm going to, I'm actually tracking on my phone, the, the live um, Facebook. So you can put in the comments uh, a question and we'll have Pat answer it live on the call. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and put your questions in the comments and Pat will be monitoring the, the, the comments later on and he will get back to you directly. So uh, Pat, you, you've got a, a couple of free things for everyone. Uh, go ahead and share with us. Sure. Because I know we're talking to an audience of people that have personal credit. Um, I'll address that first. So just today, the, the Federal Trade Commission is changing. So annualcreditreport.com. Just write this URL down. Annualcreditreport.com. It's a federally recognized credit report. It's everything on your credit report that you can get publicly or, you know, personally. And they're offering it for free. It used to be once a year. Now they're offering it once a week. That's huge. So the, the key is protect and preserve, right? So you need to be aware of what's on your report. Up to 80% of credit reports have errors on them. Yeah. So go find out, go to annualcreditreport.com, sign up, get that report coming in every week. It doesn't have a score but it's got all the items that are reporting and know what's on your report. That's number one. That's the freebie. I just got that information today. I also do a free consultation. You can always reach that at dignitycreditsolutions.com uh, forward slash calendar, I believe it is. Um, just go to dignitycreditsolutions.com. There's a make appointment button. That's pretty all, easy. All, all of these <laughs> URLs, by the way, I'm going to have Pat put in the comments so you don't okay. have to worry about your driving, you're looking for a pencil, a yeah. pen, don't have an accident. It's okay, yeah, yeah. you're gonna put it in the comments. So I give a free 15 minute consultation and review your stuff and just give you some guidance on your personal credit. Business credit, now if you're interested in building business credit as a EIN, not your social security number, 
there, it's high, you get higher limits and it's a lot easier to, it takes months to build it instead of years. You can actually in 90 days, about 90 days, you can build good business credit and it's easier to fix if you do make mistakes. So that is also, there's going to be a free offer. Uh, it's a dignitycreditsolutions.com slash free. So it's my business name, dignitycreditsolutions.com forward slash free. And again, that will be in there. There's an ebook in there that goes through the steps of how to build business credit. Now that's for the DIYers, the do-it-yourselfers. If you'd rather have somebody help you out along that way, that's what we're here for. Just schedule a consult. You can on my Facebook page and Gary will provide the link. Really easy. Just click on the button to make an appointment. Pick whether it's personal credit or business credit and then schedule an appointment at your convenience. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and again, Pat, please put all those URLs and everything in the comments after we're finished here. Um, it make it easy for people to click and connect with you on those. So thank you. So let's come back. You know, one of the things that I have always done in my programs and that we have done in this program is wanting to give you concrete uh, ideas, uh, strategies, techniques, something to do right now that's going to make a difference. And so I ask Pat, what are three things that you would suggest people doing right today, at least in, say, like, let's say in the next 48 hours? Because um, if you go longer than that, we know that you know, it's going to be a great <laughs> idea, but we're going to forget. But right. relatively soon, what would you think is going to give them the best benefit, the best boost right now in regards to any type of situation with credit? Sure. Uh, number one, go to annualcreditreport.com and order your credit report. Find out what's on there. It's hard to it's hard to fix something when you don't know what's in there. So take a look at it and make sure that everything in there. I've I've seen people with um, collections that weren't theirs, and that you know that can have a huge impact on your score. So as far as what to do, go to annualcreditreport.com and order your credit report. That's number one. Uh, number two thing to do is um, gosh, I know it's going to sound silly, but budget, right? Get a budget and know where your money is going so that you're not overstretching certain credit cards. If that's, if that's just what you have to do right now is use your credit cards, try and figure out a way to, to level out the balances so you don't have big spikes and you're, you're throwing away a lot of money and in interest, but it's, that will also help keep your scores up is if you don't max out. 30% is the rule. Keep your balances below 30%. So a $500 card, 30% is not that much money. Right. So um, try if you're wanting to raise your score, that's I'm assuming people want to keep their credit score good or improve it. This is what these will help. And then, um, you know, for number three, I would, I would say that the, again, this is going to sound simple, but write down what you want to do with your credit. Make some decisions. I mean, that's a real simple thing to do when you get off this call is just write down, you know, I mean, most people don't, they put their credit back here and they're like, I'll deal with it when it's a problem. So I encourage my clients to just make a decision. You know, like I said in my speech, when we, or my talk at your boot camp at the Speakers National Boot Camp, it's like, you, you got to put your foot down at some point. If, you, if you're in a credit crisis right now, you got to put your foot down and just make a decision to make a change. You don't have to have all the answers, but decide today, right now, when you, even right now, if you're driving, don't do it, you know, don't write it down, but <laughs> write down that I will make a change today and that will start the ball rolling to the recovery process to get your credit back on track. I had a below 500 credit score at one time. Now it's over 750 and has been for a few years. It's a much better place at over 750. <laughs> yeah. You get to spend more of your money. So what I'm hearing from that is you said, you know, get your credit uh, report. And, you know, back in the day as a financial planner, people were always afraid to do that because they were afraid what was on it. And I'm going, well, it, it's there whether you know it or not. And so <laughs> it's better to know and be able to do something about it. And the number two was, I don't like budget guy, but create a spending plan. Make a determination if you have to make a, decision on maybe not being able to pay all the bills or all the bills 100%, make a decision out of seeing what those, all of the choices are. And maybe there's things that you can move more easily off, I would think. 
And number three that you had is just, yeah, you know, wh where are you going with that vision part that, you know, that that's why Pat and I really relate to each other because I've been a big proponent of, uh, you know, the Stephen Covey, start with the end in mind. Why are you doing what you're doing? Right. So, Pat, time flies by. We're already at 25 minutes. So, uh, guys, I'm going to look real quick. Uh, oh, okay. I had a question here. What about no credit, bad credit? Uh, says spent about 20 years paying straight cash, medical bills and about thousands uh, went on, uh, went to creditors. So what do you suggest for somebody in that type of situation? Sure. Um, there's a mix of credit that gives the best profile to the credit agencies. And when I say agencies, I mean Equifax, Experian, TransUnion what they're looking for. So they want a little bit of a mix of everything. Um, so that's easy enough to do if, if you can get a credit card and maybe a car payment and a mortgage. That's a good cross section. Um, if you have no credit, there's ways to build it quickly with very small limit cards and other strategies that we can discuss if that's something they want to talk about. Okay. If you have dings on your credit, I work with a good credit repair company that can handle big stuff. I can do some of the small stuff. But I've got a credit repair company that is, I, they're magicians, I'm telling you. 30 plus years in the industry, they know what they're doing and they, they make things happen. So if you've got dings on your credit and you're curious about that, I'm talking like student loans. That's a big one. Student loans that people are behind, or they're, they're suffocating. Um, medical bills, like you say, uh, collections, those type of things. They have a way to um, negotiate with the people and I've seen them do some amazing things. Cool. So again, there's options. You just don't on a specific basis. You don't know what it really is. So I, again, I'd recommend reaching out to Pat and, you know, it's a place to start. We're not selling Pat, selling his services, but use him as a resource. If yeah. he's the right fit, then great. If not, I know that he has individuals that he can send you to. So right now, that was the only question that I am seeing. And uh, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for staying with us for the Facebook Give Back series. And we'll be doing, uh, I believe, another one next week. We're going to continue to do these and bring get great guests like Pat. And so like we have ended all of the programs, I'm going to let Pat have the last word. You know, that, that send off, you know, encouragement, uh, words of wisdom, whatever that may be. And Pat, you're up. So you see this background? There's a lot of people that want to be in Hawaii or on the beaches or traveling. That requires a credit card to do that. So my advice, my send off is find time during this shutdown to really make a decision to make a change in your financial and credit future because this is nice and i want everybody to have the opportunity to have worry-free nights of sleep and not being worried about how am i going to make that payment or you know we're going to lose the house so that all starts with a decision we can help you with that and those are free those are free consultations to help you wrap your head around what's going on but definitely I, the, the words of wisdom i would say is make a decision today to make a change today. You know, the, sometimes the old sayings are the wisest. I was hearing in my head, the longest journey starts with a single step. That's right. And that's what we're encouraging everyone to do. So again, Pat, thank you so much for everyone. Thank you for being on the program with us. And I will see you on the next Facebook Give Back Live. Have a great day.